Well, that was a fairly important game that we lost, uh, although not quite that much of a backbreaker in the grand scheme of things. Hopefully, if the season goes as I continue to predict, but uh, really what I felt like that came came down to was arguably the best player currently in the NHL and maybe the leader in the Hart Trophy race for MVP of the NHL had one of those games, uh, had some phenomenal plays and really was very clearly the best player on the ice. And our potential MVP candidate, while he did get on the board, did not take over the game quite in the same way that Kucherov did. So I think that's really what this game came down to. All in all, the 4-1 scoreline, I think, made this game look a lot worse than it was. Yes, one was the empty netter, and that third goal was... Uh, but the first two were just good plays. So let's go ahead, start at the top, and go ahead and talk about this one. So I felt like the first period was actually quite good from the Devils. We came out hotter uh, than the Tampa Bay Lightning. We had the earlier chances, the better of the chances. And I felt like basically start to finish of that first period, we were the better team. But, well, we didn't get on the board. And uh, we didn't get on the board till almost, what was it, halfway through the game. And it took, surprise, surprise, special teams to do it, as we did not score a single 5-on-5 goal in this one. Tampa, however, did. We somehow kept their uh, league-leading power play off of the board, even though we gave them multiple chances. Uh, but thankfully, penalty kill kind of came through. We had uh, a really great save by Schmidt on, uh, I believe it was Stamkos uh, there at one point. He did make a couple of other uh, breakaway saves as well, another point-blank one-by-point that he saved uh, throughout earlier in the game. But then I don't feel like he really held up his end of the bargain, uh, but the first two were not on him. The first goal was just an elite pass there by Kucherov. Um, arguably, Siegenthaler probably should not pinch against Kuch there. Gotta let the two guys that were already on him be enough of a deterrent or believe your goalie is going to make a save from the center of the ice on a not fully opportune shot. Instead, he kind of leaves the back post there and that allows Hedman for a very clean, easy shot into the net. I don't put that one on Schmidt at all. In my opinion, that was more so on Siegenthaler and Kucherov just making an elite play. The second goal against was once again Kucherov making an elite play. I don't put this one on Schmidt at all either. Uh, really, I don't think it was much on the defense um, uh, either uh, in this case, uh, but it was just getting the puck over to point who breaks through off of, uh, you know, again, a, a very strong play from Cooch. And then Schmidt kind of kicks it into his own net. Now, is that a young goalie not realizing the only angle that can really go in is him flinging his foot back towards the net for it to go off of? Maybe, but I, I, I don't really put that on Schmidt, but I could see the argument that, you know, maybe he needs to um, control his feet in the way that would prevent the only angles of a puck coming from behind him to be able to go in to not kick it into your own net. I don't think that was really a much of a defensive breakdown, honestly. It was just some elite guys making some elite skill plays. And I'm not going to be too upset if those are the two goals you give up. Now, we still would have lost if those were the only two goals we gave up, uh, being down, uh, only being able to score the one goal on the power play, which we did. Uh, I didn't think the power play was even all that bad in this one. Now, come the third period, when we had a chance to tie it up with two almost back-to-back -back power plays early on in the third period, we did not. Uh, we also had other chances to tie it up, five at five. We had um, a Timo Meyer shot that just barely hit his shoulder uh, that was lined up for the top corner uh, that could have gone in. I feel like that was really Timo's only strong play of the game. I did not think he had a very strong one. And this one, after a very strong outing last night, I don't know if that's still battling through this in injury, uh, just physical limitations of falling out the last game and just not having the gas tank for this one or not, but he did not seem as physically engaged in this one. And again, outside of that one single really good shot chance, did not think he stood out too much. We also had Hallinan, who... Maybe if it wasn't his first game or just a bit more experience or was higher level or whatever you want to call it, could have pocketed in a very good chance and instead just misses the net. And so we remain down by one. We had our chances. I thought the Nico Bratt line was also very strong, five on five throughout. Uh, had multiple chances to score earlier, tie it in the middle or even bring it back in within, within one later in the third period. They just didn't find the net at all for that line. Again, it's 
going to happen in games. It's just, you know, unfortunate that we, they weren't able to find it for this one to tie it back up. Jack, Luke, uh, had a struggle of game. The analytics I did briefly look at um, uh, finishing up this game because, you know, it's a bit of a delayed reaction. Analytics actually able to fully come through. Uh, so I did sneak peek an eye on those. Jack did not have the best of games, but I test, I, I really didn't think it was his worst. I think a lot of that came from, came from the one shift earlier on, uh, the first goal by Tampa Bay, where Point had multiple chances that were stopped. They had a few more chances when they were hemmed in. Then there was another really high danger chance, and then finally Hedman got the goal. So I think they kind of got stacked against on that one shift that did lead to a goal against. Uh, otherwise, I felt like Jack did have chances to fully, even after the power play goal, had a 5-on-5 shift. Uh, almost uh, one or two shifts right after that where he could have had a, a, a tap in up front. He opted to try and go around the goaltender, and it was close, no cigar. Uh, mostly created all off of Jack Hughes' stick. Uh, really, I felt like there was definitely some frustration in Jack's games. Lots of blocked shots, especially against Jack, but as a whole, Tampa blocked a metric ton of shots. Uh, Jack, for sure, I think was a bulk of those. Uh, so I don't know if that maybe affected his shot choice selection or his uh, net driving selection, but it is what happened. From there, you know, I called out the one Siegenthaler play I didn't think was great. Uh, I thought he had a fairly rough game. Uh, Marino had the one on the third goal that was rough. I can talk about that here. I think that third one's on Schmid. Uh, he overcommitted to the Kucherov point side, which I can understand wanting to overcommit to Kucherov and point, but he lost his net completely on that one. Marino probably could have, should have been able to bat that puck away. He did make stick contact on it, but instead it kind of just falls out in front of him and Hagel beats, it, beats him to it. And taps it in to a wide open net because Schmidt was not swimming, but lost his net completely on the left side there. Um, beyond that, you know, I, I didn't think there was too much. You're going to give up chances in a game, right? It's There's no perfect game in the NHL, really. So it's just how well can you cover up the few mistakes that you are supposed to make in a game. And in this case, the first two goals were just really elite guys doing elite things. The third one was our goaltender biting on those elite guys and leaving his net open uh, for a, a puck that wasn't cleared by our defender. Fourth goal is an empty net. I don't care about empty net goals, really, to analyze for any reason. Don't You just don't want to find yourself in those positions anyway. Yeah, we were really good last year at coming back with empty nets. This year, not so much. Hey, we have a, a young defense that is, you know, finding its way here. Our 1D has been out for... 85% of the season at this point, a uh, big power play guy, big uh, goalie pulled guy, big five on five, just everything Dougie Hamilton does for us. We are way, way, way feeling the effects of not having him in the lineup and really, really having to lean on two young defensemen. So that's really it on this one. I don't think there's too much else. It's their elite guy, MVP player, had his handprint, footprint, fingerprint all over this game. And our guys couldn't quite match that. I thought they were pretty good. Uh, and our one guy that is that level, the 100-point player in Jack Hughes, had one point, which is good. You, you love that. But otherwise, 5-on-5, five five, couldn't quite find the back of the net. But that's how hockey's going to go sometimes, especially when apparently he's either playing maybe still a little bit through that injury or still a little sick because we know the flu's going through the room. And that was the game. Uh, you you want to be able to find the back of the net against a team who's starting their backup goalie, has a bit of an injured defense. Uh, should we have had more shots on that? Yeah, but I didn't really hate the game through the first two. I do feel like Tampa uh, had a bit of blood in the water in the third period that we couldn't quite overcome. But all in all, I, I really don't think it was all that awful of a game. And that's really it. We now have two games that are basically must-wins. Uh, to keep us in it, yeah, the Penguins just beat the Flyers last night as well, making them breathing down our necks with games in hand uh, that we have to be able to stay in front of. But it also means the team we're chasing, which I think is much more important, lost. Uh, so it makes the race to catch them all that easier. So with Gensel out for the Penguins, with the Flyers potentially selling coming up here, that is still the pathway that I see for us making it. The Caps are breathing down the neck, the Islanders are breathing down our neck, they, there are gains in hands between them with the Penguins as well. Just win more than we're losing here. Catch the Flyers and in the third Metro spot, as I've been saying for weeks now. And I still do believe that is our pathway there, not the wild card. So if that's the case, this game stinks as far as not gaining ground on the Flyers. 
uh, but less so as far as basically a four point swing against a team that we could have passed for a wild card spot if this third place Metro prediction does not come to fruition. Uh, at this point, I do think it's third third Metro spot or got to go on a heck of a run to get a wild card spot uh, from Detroit or Tampa. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this analyst here. Um, otherwise, you know, I thought Nemich was was mostly fine in this one. Ball didn't have any Hallen in in his first game. I thought was good. Uh, not great. Good. He had chances. Would you have liked him to have buried one of those? Yeah, but it's his rookie game. You know, whatever at that point. So in my opinion, that really just comes down to would we have liked a bigger game from Timo? Probably is one of the biggest ones. And Nico and Bratline finding a point. They, I think they played well enough to get one. They just didn't. And that's how it's going to go. So we're right back at it tomorrow in this case as I'm recording the next day instead of the instant reaction. Win a couple here back-to-back -back against a couple of teams in the Sharks and Ducks that we should beat. Not going to be watching those lives with the West Coast start times. Instead, I'll be kind of doing this, watching a replay in the morning, and then giving a reaction the next day. So I'll see you guys, not tomorrow, but the next day, uh, to go ahead and continue to cover this team all the way through the end of the season where we're going to win the cup. Don't, don't worry about it. Uh, so as always, and forever, let's go Devils.